Ooh. DJ T Gut events about working with Webby before dying. Rest in peace. It's hard out here, bro. Make sure to like and subscribe, man. Let's get into it. Welcome back and thank you for joining us for the second half hour hey. of The Factor Uncensored. The entertainment industry appears to be glamorous when you're on the outside looking in, but you never know what someone could be going through on the inside. Take DJ T. Captions off. Who is known as a DJ for a rapper, Webby, is now dead. Oh, Police man. in Georgia say he shot. By suicide. Ooh killed his wife shot himself and killed hold on shot hold on go back as a dj for a rapper webby is now dead police in georgia say he shot and killed his wife shot himself and killed shot and killed his wife before taking his own life wow. that was sunday the motives pussy. behind this tragedy remains under investigation, but it happened after DJ T. Gutter vented online about his partnership with Webby on social media. In an online post, he described working with the rapper as a living hell. Mm. My next guests also work in the entertainment industry. They join us now with their perspective about this. And joining us on the Factor Uncensored tonight, we have with us DJ Superstar, DJ Henny, and DJ Sneak. So when you guys see such a troubling... I don't know any of these people. And it's sad because I'm a DJ myself. I may have heard of these people. This is Houston, Texas. But we're going to get into it. What his point is working with <laughs> Webby was a living hell. Working with artists, doing events as a DJ in general is a living... It is it's not easy. When it comes to weddings, artists, nightclubs, bars, whatever, private events, there's always some kind of difficulty. If you don't have, listen, I'll tell you this. If you don't have ownership within like the label you're working with or the venue or the event production company, whatever, it's always going to be a living hell as a DJ. One, they don't really like to pay DJ shit. But yeah, we're going to listen to this video. Disturbing story like DJ T Gutter and what he had to say about Webby then taking his own life and killing his wife is just uh, mind blowing that someone would have that much, I would assume, pressure on them. But first of all, what are your thoughts about the situation and him uh, spilling so much on, on rapper Webby and then taking his own life and his wife? By the way, I hate working with rappers. If it's like a Kid Cudi, Kanye West, or even Griselda, that type of rap, I'm cool with. These hood ghetto ass rappers and shit that be turning up. Honestly, I personally feel like that was something more deeper than what we see. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. When you take, I mean, when you, first of all, when you do all of that and then you take somebody else's life, you're really. Be king? Now, I work with B-King. I like his stuff. Like, leave with a statement or, you know. The fact that like they would really let, the fact that they would put that, you know this news channel ghetto as hell. The fact that they would put him on there with that shirt and not blur it out, y'all hell for that. To, like, leave with a <laughs> statement or, you know, mm -hmm. you're trying to make a point. You oh, know what I'm okay. saying? And so it feels, it felt like it was something else much deeper than what we saw. DJ Henny, your thoughts on it? Uh, you know, just taking away from the DJ part, but just working alone and not, and if you're not allegedly being paid, I can imagine the stress. I heard the the guy had children, and if your back gets against the wall and you're not mm -hmm. making money, you can't pay your bills, and Lord knows how long this has been going on. I can see yeah. the amount of stress that builds up because yeah. when people get their back against the wall, you know, they, they can do anything to try to make things work. And then also, we don't know mental health plays a part. You know, I don't know enough about this guy's character. I don't know about the relationship. But I will say that I think we've all been in positions to where money has been an issue and we, we would do things that we don't normally do. Let me tell you something. He's exactly right. And this is why I think as a DJ, and like I said, unless you got ownership with the label, you are a contracted worker. Because some of y'all are just DJs because it's your homeboy. Like, he could he could have been Webby's friend in high school or something. Webby's like, oh, my homie T. Gutter or my cousin T. Gutter. You know, he get T. Gutter on there. He probably pay him, like, a 1000 a gig. Keep in mind, if Webby's doing only, like, four or five shows a month, club showings, whatever, yada, yada, 
that's probably not enough money. If you got like five, six kids and, you know, you you not doing that many shows and some shows, mate, you can't even pay them that 1000 a show, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes these DJs get fucked over and they get paid in experience. I've had people literally, this is when I was younger, they said, oh, we can get you at a festival, we'll pay you $100, you get free drinks, and we'll get you in the backstage. Now, when you're... 17 years old, no kids, no obligations, nothing. That is something that you should take. But when you have like three or four kids and a stupid ass motherfucker says, I'm going to get you exposure, $100 a DJ for seven hours for the whole festival, and you got kids? Bro, I'm not, I'm punching the promoter in his fucking nose, bro. Especially if it's a show. That they're selling tickets for $250 and it's sold out. And you can't pay the DJ at least like $5,000? Like, bro, it's it's so crazy. It's so crazy. When you see some of these festivals and some of these events, you'd be surprised. It'd be events where they have like an attendance of like $30,000. Ticket, ticket prices range from like, you know, $150 to $300, $500 VIP, backstage, everything be sold out, and they want to give the DJ $1,000. <laughs> it's crazy. But like you said, when your back's up against the wall, man, people will do anything, man. Hey, sneak your thoughts on DJ T. Gutta. Yeah, I agree with Superstar because I feel like if you have the courage and, like, guts to take your own life and let alone someone else's, especially someone you love, like, there has to be more to the story, you know, because that's a different type of, like, anger. And First of all, that- why the fuck are they asking these people? I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to be rude, but I got to keep it real. I don't know any of these three DJs. I'm not from Houston. T. Gutta was obviously Webby's DJ. In that whole clique, what, I don't know what the, the group was, Little Boozy, Fox, uh, Webby, uh, Mouse, all those other dudes. You know what I mean? Why not ask another DJ in that clique or a producer or another rapper in that clique? I don't know these niggas. Like, what? Person. They don't. Sometimes these people don't do a good job picking the people to get on the panel. Maybe because they're rushing in, they probably couldn't get in t- contact with Webby and uh, Lil Boosie's team, whatever. But at least I would just—I don't know. With his team being that that big, like you should probably ask somebody a publicist or something in their team. I don't know these niggas. You're going through. And we know many of you have worked with you know celebrities, saying? not traveling so much on a tour, but, you know, at the nightclub. Okay, listen to it- what he just said. That person must be going through. And we know many of you have worked with celebrities, not traveling so much. Oh, they said with tour- Webby. Okay. Or, but, you know, at the nightclubs. Is it difficult working with celebrities? You know, I recently saw one of our DJs here. They in should town. have chose a better panel of people. All they're going to say is, oh, I don't know. It could be something deeper. Could be something deeper. That's crazy. Could be something deeper. That's crazy. But if you chose somebody in his clique, they would be like, man, he was, you know, he, he was this, he was that. Because they know of him. These niggas don't know of the. Oh, my God. Anyways, uh, we're gonna stop. With whatever. Another celebrity and the celebrity. What did Cameron just say? Went, Who the fuck the talent agent for this joint? And <laughs> on him, and people are upset with that celebrity because we love that DJ. And sometimes they get an ego and they just go too far with DJs. So you, you guys, your thoughts on that and what it's like working with celebrities? Man, you know, one day I'm gonna end up writing a book, like a little tell-all book. I'm not gonna use like real names, but you know, oh, people that don't know know. But <laughs> um, man, I can tell you some stories. Some people, some celebrities, like you can't put all celebrities in that box, you know. But you know, there are some celebrities that are easier to work with than mm-hmm. others. You know, that don't have that ego. I've even seen like other DJs get upset at uh, at 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 an opening DJ for playing something like I guess they thought they were gonna play. I mean, it's so much that goes. Yeah, on. burning the DJ. Uh, that means like let, let's say when the Sheck West song was popping, and your opening DJ and you play the Sheck West song. You're not supposed to do that. 
opener DJs actually have a harder job because you have to keep the crowd's attention without being so boring. You have to be relevant but not play stuff that's hot right now. So, like, hot right now, like, if I was an opener DJ, I'm not playing Not Like Us. I am not doing that. I'm not playing any type of rendition of that song. You know what I mean? That's for the headliner DJ. <laughs> but so I feel like when you're a DJ and you have like a head and you're the headliner and you have like a bunch of openers, it's way easier to do your job when you're the headliner DJ. I think more so your job as the headliner is to do more of the marketing and promoting because if you're the headliner and there's a shit ton of openers and you're only playing for like an hour or 45, 30 minutes, all you're doing is playing the hits. Not like us, you know, swag surfing, wipe me down. That's easy as fuck. That's so easy. Like, uh, like my mom said, a fucking 10 year old can do that shit. A lot of people don't see. And it just goes back to your mental. Some people can't handle like a lot. Some people just can't handle ha- handle sometimes the pressure that, that, that goes on with, you know, dealing with DJs, yeah. dealing with music, pleasing everybody playing and all of that and then not getting paid that's tough yeah sneak you that sick. makes people want to do some crazy stuff when you dealing with these hood niggas bro mm. it was difficult when you- sometimes you even pay them oh it ain't enough money but this is what we literally like sometimes look bro i've dealt with people where you literally email and write down via text what the fuck the payment was and show them this is what the payment was. And they literally get mad. They will get pissed off. Well, we agreed on 500. But you can't give me a little bit more. But this, I hate, look, this is why I don't like to talk to some of the, unless the artist has like, is like mature. I'm talking to the manager. But sometimes even these managers be on some stupid shit. So I don't know, man. Working in nightclubs, and then some artists, some rappers want are demanding oh, fucking of music tired of that about you rappers. had no clue they were going to perform. Yeah, so sometimes it would come to the point where like they wouldn't even tell us that the artist was coming. They just randomly showed up, and uh, yeah. they would be like, "Hey, play this track." And I. Oh yeah, that that's happened to me many times before. It was a young man from B2K that had came to one of my gigs. And the bartender had texted me, hey, you know, whoop de woos here from B2K. I'm like, who? So I look up and I see him. I'm like, oh, that really is him. Keep in mind, I grew up listening to B2K. I didn't collect none of their shit because none of their music, whatever, you know. And keep in mind, yeah, I do a lot of Y2K parties, but I only have like maybe three B2K songs. I got a lot of Omarion, but, you know, Bomb, Bomb, Bomb and the um, whatever other songs, right? In, that, in my deck at that time, keep in mind, for the night, my set was like Afro Beach, Chill House, Alternative House, little mashups here and there. In my deck for that time with my hard drive, I only had maybe two B2K songs. <laughs> and I was like, and the dude was standing right in front of me. And I'm, I may go into it later because he, he was kind of disrespectful, but I only had two songs. And I was like, <laughs> I wasn't too mad because he was kind of disrespectful, though. But have it, and they would start cussing me out, and they're like, "How do you not have my music?" And I'm just like, "Oh yeah, I was like, okay." Let me tell you something, DJ. Let me let him, let me let him finish real quick. Supposed to know that this artist was coming in, and sometimes it was an artist that's you know they're big, but they're not like to that level where I should have every song, mm-hmm. you know. And I just feel like they feel entitled, you know, just because they have a little bit of fame. But I, it's even come to the point where they unplugged my stuff. That's how mad they were. Oh, if they ever did that to me, I'm swinging hands. <laughs> That's why if I'm ever doing a big gig, I'm bringing my boys with me. And we kicking ass, bro. Like, if you you ever touch my stuff, I'm going to put my hand over there to block you. And if you put your hand on me, I'm knocking your ass out. I'm sorry. I don't care how big you are. Big dudes, just go for their fucking knees. Maverick, we should make another video about that. I can show y'all. Y'all let these big ass dudes intimidate you. Go for their knees. Dislocate that shit. They done, right? But let me tell you. I've had nights like that with with, what DJ Sneak was saying. But DJ Sneak, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some advice, bro, or whoever the DJ is watching this. This is why you got to get Downey. Go to set, S-E-T-A-P-P app. 
Go to that, Google that set app and look for a program or a plugin in that on that website called Downy. Downy will allow you to download any song off of SoundCloud and YouTube. Okay. Now it is one of them apps that's similar to like ripping shit off the internet, right? And I know that's illegal. But when it comes to push or shove, when I have moments like that, that is what I do. If a if an artist comes in or for whatever comes in, hey DJ, can you play this song? Can you play it right now? And I'm like, bro, I'm literally, and let's say Nelly walks in and he has a song, new song that I haven't heard of, whatever, blah, 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 blah. His management don't have it on file, but it's on YouTube. I will just use that app, get that song real quick, and download it. Because as as the DJ, the people don't understand the DJ. Most people in the room don't understand. They just see a laptop. <laughs> this is why when they see a laptop, they think you should be able to just to look up the song and play it. Which shouldn't be the case, but unfortunately, you have to be able to do that. When you play at all these bigger nightclubs, you have to be able to pull up the song real quick. That's why every club I go to, before I start, what's the Wi-Fi? You know, I got my backup phone. I got I got two phones. One of them got a hotspot. Uh, if I hook it up to it. Get the Wi-Fi. Go to iTunes. Buy the song. Get it high quality. Get it real quick. You got to be on your point. That's going to set you apart from other DJs because a lot of DJs are like, I don't have it. Bro, if it's a big tipper, find the song, pull it out. You probably use a Serato. Use some stems to mash it in. Be creative. You got to be creative. This is where practicing and, and talent is going to set you apart from other people, bro. Really? Oh, wow. I like his response, though. Explain I like the DJ the sneak guy. He's cool. When you say they unplug your stuff. So they told me to play a song and... I was like, I don't have it. And he's like, what the F do you mean you don't have it? And I'm like, I mean, I don't have it, but I can download it. And he's like, See? man. Don't even, don't even say you don't have it. If you know you can download it, just download it. Just do it. Especially if it's like a dude that's like, like, you know, a artist or somebody that's coming in this big spinning. Just download it. Just do it. Just straight up unplug my stuff. Wow. In the middle and of the night, while the music is like, anything that hostile before? Uh, yeah, Sneak, you are a good dude. You're a good man. I could tell Sneak, my brother, you got a good console, probably man of God. If that was me, I'm picking up my decks and I'm busting somebody's head open with them. But I would only do that if they put their hands on me. Because what I would do, they unplug my stuff, I'm putting my hand out. To unplug it. If I feel them put their hand on me, I'm picking up the decks and I'm busting somebody's head open. I swear to God. Uh, well, I, I will you do say not that unplug nobody's decks, bro. Like, come on. I agree with them. Uh, working with promoters, whether it's an artist, uh, there are times where it's very difficult to work with people. So I'm gonna just tell you, because of that, and Houston is the hot spot right now. You got all these celebrities coming. I have started creating folders. For a particular artist that could pop up <laughs> on you anytime. He's smart. Get, because the locals, I mean, like uh, Sneak said, they come in unannounced, and then they don't want you to play the stuff that everybody know. They want to mm -hmm. promote the new thing that you never heard of. And you're like, oh, wow, and then you, yeah. you're trying to. You the go, new thing that nobody ever heard of and nobody in the club want to hear either. Yeah, they want to promote that shit. I hate that. Frantic, so you got to keep it together. There is a lot of stress that plays a a part of this, and that's why I'm starting to make the folders all ready to be prepared. Incredible. Well, we want to thank you guys for sharing your stories a good video. out in the trenches in the world of DJing. <laughs> it's just mind-blowing what happened to DJ T. Gutta, and we, of course, we yeah. send prayers to him and his family. Yes, or, well, he's gone now, but to his family. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no shit. But, yeah, rest in peace, T. Gutta. I mean... Can I say peace? I mean, you fucking killed your wife, so yeah. I don't know. Like I said, it's a little deeper than that. Should they have chose a better panel of DJs or people on this episode? Yes, they should have. But all three of these DJs, Sneak, Superstar, and uh, my young guy over here, Henny, they all gave amazing feedback. They gave the best that they could give, but they should have chose a better panel for this because it's it's if we were talking about if, if this was a video about DJ Sneak's incident, conflict in the nightclub, I think that all three of these people would be a great fit for that segment. But we're talking about T, DJ T Gutta, who got 
who shot himself and murdered his wife. That's a homicide, right? They should have gotten some of T Gutta's family, like cousins, brothers, his publicist, or some artist that may have worked with him or whatever. That would have been a better fit for this segment. Um, so I don't know. I just think that it could have been a better better video, but all three of the DJs gave great input. And um, Sneak, sorry that happened to you, brother. You are a better man than me, because um, I definitely would have, um, yeah, it would have been a lot different for me. I'm plugging my shit. You do not do that. And to, to Henny's point, the guy with the red hat right here, he made a point about, uh, and I may have addressed it earlier. I don't know, but I'm just going to say it again. Sometimes they don't pay the DJ. Sometimes they don't do that. I get it. And this is why I think when you DJ, don't come into this just depending off of the wicked, 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 wicked. Don't come into that thinking that. Come into DJing thinking of the next step, thinking of other ways to make this work. Because DJs, from my experience doing private events, weddings, anything, even at some of the nightclubs, they are the last ones to get the piece of the pie. At most of the weddings I've done, the DJ and entertainment have been the last ones to get the piece of the pie. They get the caterer first. They get they pay the wedding planner, the designs, the plates, the rent for the venue, the whatever, the dresses, the suits, blah, 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 blah. And in the last like few thousand dollars, they decide to cut off to the DJ or party favors. It's how it is, bro. I swear, man, it's, it's sad. It's sad. And the DJ be the one doing the most work the whole time. Everything else is already laid out. So, yeah, man. Um, don't depend on DJing as your main source of income, bro. Try to figure out the ways to make this happen. Um, this is why I think uh, if you DJ and you are around a lot of popular artists, man, get into, like, public publishing. Pu yeah, public. I'm sorry. Get into publishing um try to make some money off of marketing they shit you have look my brother over here henny he just said he had a whole crate full of all their shit bro i'd be like yo let me get on some of that marketing money let me get on some of that publishing shit like you get me on that shit i got a residency i'm gonna record myself playing your shit all the time pay me some bread and if you see mo do that with every artist that comes to the door bro don't let these people waste your time because if you're playing their song and you like that dude, obviously you got put on the news channel. You got something going for yourself. Put some money behind my back, uh, homie. If you want me to play your new song, put some money behind my back. We're going to promote that stuff at my residencies. And every time you pull up, they're going to know it's you. So, yeah. My advice on that for Henny and any other DJ or whatever. But Superstar Henny, Sneak, and uh, Homeboy fox houston man it's a good video i like this man dj kane i'm out peace